Hello everyone, in this video we're going to show the finishing and polishing tools for resin-based composite restorations. For this same video in Arabic, kindly check the link in the description box below. In this video we're going to focus on class 1 and class 2 finishing and polishing tools. For class 3, 4 and 5 restorations it's going to be in a separate video. Before we start talking about the finishing and polishing tools, it is very 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 important that you contour the restoration, the composite rest restoration, as much as possible. So you create anatomy, you create the grooves, you create the contour, uh, make sure there is no excess around the margins, no excess proximally, uh, there is no uh, occlusal overhang. Uh, take your time during creating the anatomy and contour and the form of the restoration Finishing and polishing will take very minimal time in a few minutes, like five or ten minutes maximum. But if you just place a blob of composite over the cavity, then it will take you up to like 45 minutes or an hour to do the finishing and polishing process. So you cannot just cure the composite and depend on the finishing and polishing for uh, contouring and anatomy. You must restore the tooth as much as possible before you light cure so the finishing and polishing process will only take a few minutes. Let's start with the finishing diamond points. Okay. We can see here that they come in different shapes and different grits. Okay, we can see the yellow is very fine as we described in a previous video the red is more coarse okay we mainly use the yellow or the red and mainly the yellow we use the red when more finishing is needed we can see here the blue this is for caution okay you're not going to use this for finishing this is a cutting tool okay so this is used only for beveling we do not use it for finishing and polishing okay so we're going to use mainly the red and the yellow okay and we're going to discuss now which ones are best to use for each class. The diamond points are usually high speed and to know the difference between high and low speed you can check the previous video. Let's start with the round or ball diamond point. Okay, for a class one we're going to place the diamond okay, on the fossa to, rem to create the fossa and remove any roughness in the occlusal part if needed. Okay, we have to be very gentle so the grooves will not go away. And the type of pressure we're talking about is not applying too much pressure like this. Okay, it needs to be very light touches because you're only removing excess. You are not removing the restoration. Okay, so you need to go with very gentle pressure. Okay, let's see here. How are we going to use it in a class 2? The same thing, you're going to leave the margin of ridge, okay, and you're going to go where the fossa is located, okay, and then you're going to create the fossa and remove the excess from the occlusal surface if it's present, okay. So this is how you're going to go with the very light pressure on the surface. The following instrument that we're going to see is the short flame or the football diamond, okay. And we're going to use this also on the occlusal surfaces, okay? So we're going to point the tip, okay, in the central groove, okay? So we're going to place it in the central groove, okay? And place the instrument in a 45 degree angle to not remove the cusp. And then we're going to go around the cusp. So the tip will be in the central groove, and then you're going to angulate the diamond point in a 45 degree in the buckle. After you finish going around the cusps, you're going to go and you're going to go and finish the lingual cusps. Okay? You're not gonna go, you know, in this way. You need to have it in a 45 degree so you do not remove the cusps. Let's look at a different view. For example, imagine between my knuckles is the central groove. So this is how you're going to angulate the diamond point and then you're going to go to the other side and angulate the diamond point in the same way. So the tip of the diamond point will always be in the central groove so you don't create multiple grooves. Let's see how you're going to finish class 2 restoration. Okay, 
the same thing. You're going to leave the marginal ridge, so the marginal ridge will not be removed. You're going to place the tip in the fossa, and then you're going to create, go around the cusps. Okay, let's see an, a different view or a closer view. We're going to leave the ridge, we're going to place it in the fossa, and then we're going to go around the cusps, placing the instrument or the tool in 45 degree angle. Okay, because we only want to remove the excess or uh, smoothen the grooves. Okay, so whether it's the mesial or the distal, it's the same way. Okay. Similarly, in class one, we'll take a closer look. I'm going to place it in the central groove in 45 degree, and then you're going to go around the cusps. Okay, this will remove very minimal amount, okay, and it will keep the anatomy you created. We can also use the flame diamond point on the occlusal surfaces, depending on the accessibility, in a similar manner. So it's similar to how the football was used or the short flame. You're going to place the tip in the central groove and then go around the cusps to remove any excess or smoothen the restoration, okay, from the buckle and then switch it to the lingual cusps, okay. It's very important to take care of the angulation when using flame diamond or the football, okay? Similarly here in class two, it is very important not to go to the direction of the marginal ridge because we don't want to lose it, okay? We, not, we want to keep it and then we're just gonna finish the occlusal surfaces, okay? Sometimes there is excess proximally. We can also use the, di the flame diamond very carefully to remove the excess from the proximal margins. However, the needle is usually used. So the following tool is the needle diamond point, and this is used mainly proximally, okay? So if we have excess in the proximal area, what are we gonna do? We're gonna just do gentle strokes to remove the excess, okay? We never ever go through the contact, okay? We do want to remove the contact, we just want to remove the excess, okay? So, very gently, with light pressure, you're going to contour the tooth using the diamond point, the needle diamond point, okay? Very gently. Again, as a caution, you are never going to go through the contact area, okay? Just remove the excess, you want to preserve the contact, okay? and you never ever use the needle on the occlusal surfaces. It will destroy the whole occlusal anatomy and it will create like a trough in the occlusal surface and everything will be destroyed. When we have excess proximity or, or an overhang, we can use also finishing strips, okay? Uh, these strips can be used, but you have to use it with caution, okay? Because you do want to destroy the contact area. So you want to finish or remove the excess, especially uh, below the contact area. You never use it in the contact area. Use it below the contact area to remove the excess. And you need to use it with caution. Okay, it comes in different uh, grits and sizes. Sometimes you have multiple grits in the same strip. Sometimes you have in the entire, uh, the entire strip is only one grit. So we're going to explain it now. So how are we going to use it? Here's an example for a strip that has two different grits. In the middle is, uh, has no grit, okay, so it's just uh, a clear area so you can insert the strip from and then you're gonna pull the strip, okay, towards the coarser grit, okay, and then you're gonna finish in an S motion or sewing motion, okay, so the contact will not be lost, okay, you're not gonna move it like you're shining your shoe, okay, so and then when you finish on one side, you're going to go to the other side, okay? You have to be subcontact. You have to be below the contact so you don't lose the contact. And then you're going to pull the strip, okay, to the middle. And then you're going to pull it towards 
the finer side, okay, the less coarse, and then you're going to do the same motion in an S motion or a sewing motion. Here I'm just going to pull it a little bit up so you can see the motion, okay? This is the motion, but you need to be below the contact so you do not lose the contact area. After you're finished, you're going to pull it back to the center, okay, where there is no uh, grits, okay, and then you're going to pull it out, okay? So this is how you use the finishing and polishing strips. Another tool that you can use interproximally is the finishing and polishing discs, okay? But also you need to remove it with caution. Uh, similar to the needle, you only remove the excess, okay? And you do not remove the whole thing. And it is the kit over here. And we're going to explain it in details in the video for finishing and polishing class three, four, and five. Moving on to the polishing tools, these are rubber points, okay? They're specific for composite polishing. And we're going to start with this tool, for example, okay? This is a flame or a torpedo, okay? And we can see that it is a low speed. Usually all polishing tools are low speed, okay? So we're going to place it in the low speed handpiece and make sure that it is inserted properly. We need to remember that the polishing process making the surface lustrous. So let's see here an example for the class one, but it is used similarly either in class one or class two. You're going to place the tip in the central groove and then go around the cusps. So it is also held in 45 degree. Using it is similar to using the football or short flame or the uh, flame diamond points. You're going to finish the buckle surfaces and then the lingual surfaces, okay? So it is used in the same way, okay? Let's see here the class two. Okay, you're going to leave the ridge and then you're going to place it in the fossa and then go through the central groove from the buckle and from the lingual, okay? And then also we're going to go in the distal restoration, okay? So it is used similarly, similar to what we explained before. Imagine that between the knuckles is the central groove. You're going to place the rubber point in a 45 degree, placing the tip in the central groove. Moving on to the following tool. Okay, we have the cup. Okay, this, is also, this also can be used for a class one or class two occlusal surfaces. Okay, and how are we going to use it? The same thing, we're going to place the edge in the central groove, okay, and go around the cusp, okay, just to uh, polish it, okay. Each cusp separately. Similarly, for class two, same thing, you're going to place it in the central groove, and then you're going to go around the cusp. Sometimes you can do this motion and, you know, polish the whole cusp depending on the size of the restoration, whether it's a class one or a class two. The following tool is the wheel, okay? So also similarly, we're going to place the edge in the central groove. Either it was a class one or a class two, and then you're going to go towards the cusps, okay? So starting from the central roofs towards the cusps on the buckle and then on the lingual. You will do the same motion whether it is a class one or a class two. So for all of these tools, whether it is for polishing or finishing, you're going to use the tool according to the surface and according to the amount of excess or what you need to finish and polish, okay? So, in this video, we discussed the finishing and polishing tools for class one and two, and in the following video, we'll discuss uh, the finishing and polishing tools for class three, four, and five, including the polishing discs over here. Thank you very much, and see you in the next video.